All right, we're going to go ahead and get things ready to go. We're about a minute and a half early, but we'll just leave on, give time, folks time to to get on. You know how bad to start, we want to be right on time. So we'll give folks a few minutes to to get on, get a, get excited about service today. Uh, looking forward to a good time this morning. Uh, Brother Jerry Bradshaw, got my tie on. All right, I'm going to see yours. All right, we'll, we'll do something here. <clears throat> All right, I understand that the roads are, at least outside my house, it looks like the road, the, the road is actually starting to break up a little bit. Church is probably still going to be a nightmare. Miss Peggy sent me a picture of what the church looks like uh, up the driveway, and it's in pretty bad shape still. So we'll, uh, I'll probably get out after, after lunch sometime today and ride over there at least see how the building has fared make sure everything's good there and then we'll we'll go uh yeah i see folks are jumping on i just can't keep up with everybody's name uh if i start calling names i'll i'll have a yeah brother jim i'd like to see your tie can i bring you in can i bring you in let's see what you're wearing uh better not i don't want to see you jammies all right <laughs> well look at there there's some florida folk watching uh, that says it's time to start. We're going to give folks a few more minutes to get in here. Miss Carol Ann, good to see you. Miss Carol Ann, is Jerry wearing his tie? We're not telling me the truth now. <laughs> Miss Amanda. <laughs> I understand. Oh, goodness. Brother Jim, you didn't shave. Well, there's a, there's a shocker, Brother Jim. I'm telling you what. All right, we're going to let folks just kind of continue to trickle on in here, and then we'll get started. From Florida. Is it warm in Florida, Miss Barbara? Because this show is not warm here. Well, I guess it is in the house. Hey, Miss Kay. There's the Jayco Bunch. All right, now get Brother Phil ready. I'm going to bring him in on the camera here in a minute, and he can sing for us. He can lead us in, shall we gather the river or something, you know, appropriate like that. He can gather by the river. He can be gathering by himself this morning. Oh, Miss Carol Ann, he's not wearing a tie. Oh, that's a demerit. Yeah. You wait. That'll cost him an extra 10 bucks in tithes right there. <laughs> All right. It says we got, I know we've got multiple folks watching on some, uh, on some feeds. So it's, it says we got 18, 18 folks watching. So that's a good deal. We'll give it, like I said, we'll give it a few more minutes. What we're going to do first, we'll, we're going to just kind of handle this almost like a service. We'll do some prayer requests and mention a few. I've got a couple that were sent in already. We'll mention, uh, if you have a prayer request you'd like to mention, you're welcome to do so. Uh, boy, Miss Emma, how was the breakfast this morning? Miss Mick, did, did Brother Mickey do a good job on on uh, cooking that breakfast? Oh, Miss Barbara, you don't have to rub it in. About 60 and sunny. That's not even funny. Hey, Brother Bruce. Did your heel ever start thawing out up there? Or down, I guess from here, that'd be down there, wouldn't it? Uh, the cases are on. All right, we're starting to pick up a few more folks. I don't see what time it is. It's oh, it's just three minutes in. So yeah, that's a good deal. Well, Miss Barber, is your husband still up here? Uh, he's still up in the uh, in the, in the cold country. Yeah, I guess. All right, I see the ramages. Oh, Brother Bruce said it's thaw thawing out some where he is. Like I said, I looked at the, the road outside the house here a few minutes ago, and it's you can start to see the road through all the slush. So maybe it's starting to get a little bit better. Oh, yeah, like I said, I said this earlier. It's going to sound like I keep repeating myself. Uh, oh, hi, Brother Jim. He made it. Kind of. <laughs> I don't even want to know what that means. Uh, <laughs> hi, Miss Peggy. Good to see you. All right. Well, you know what I did? I messed up, left my coffee sitting way over there on the other side of the... Uh, of the... Oh, goodness, Miss Dana, you haven't... Uh, 
we'll, we'll add that to the prayer list. Are they going to remove that thing completely? Sorry, sorry, Miss Dean. I didn't mean to air you. You been this out on Facebook Live. I'm sorry. Uh, but we'll we'll try to keep that to a minimum. Well, that's not a that's not a bad deal. Mine mine left a few years ago, and Miss Christie had hers out. So anyway, it's probably cold by now, Miss Jenny. So if I went and got it, I'd probably have to. Try to warm it up and all that kind of stuff. So we'll be all right. We'll survive. Uh, we're going to go a couple more minutes and just see what we get as far as as uh, folks getting on. And then we'll, we'll have our prayer request and we'll have uh, all that we need to do. Oh, all right. Let me get back here and let, let me get back here and see if I can't bring. I hope Brother Phil's wearing his tie. Hey, Brother Chris. How you feeling today, brother? He gonna look kind of funny when, when if he ain't wearing his tie, and I bring him on this video, and everybody can see him. Oh, uh, Miss Miss Nancy hadn't responded. I, I'm thinking maybe she had to go wake him up. <laughs> I'm gonna have to quit talking. I'm gonna get myself in trouble. I better just quit talking, go to preaching. I stay. I, I get in less trouble that way sometimes. Oh goodness! I asked my wife last night if I should should put my hat on and do all the you know the funny stuff. Uh, with the video while we were doing this, and she, she, uh, yeah, I got to look anyway. That's all I'm gonna say. That's, that's, yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> no time. Well, I tell you what, all these slackers, no ties. That's just not even funny. All right, the Buckmeyers are rolling in. Good to see y'all this morning. I guess that would be a good to see y'all. It's good to have you on the on the on the live stream. All right, so we're gonna get. Let's see, it's eleven oh seven. We're gonna give just a couple, two more minutes, two or three more minutes. About ten minutes after, we'll get started. Uh, just want to give everybody a chance uh, to to get things going. Uh, all right. And I'm not going to sing either, so you don't want me singing by myself. I can't talk to anybody else to come on. Let's say, bro, wait a minute now, Brother Jerry is supposed to be singing the special today. Maybe he's the one I ought to bring in here and let him sing his special this, the, today. That might work out even better. We'll let Brother Jerry come on and sing. Y'all would probably enjoy that better than me preaching anyway. All right. All right. We're gonna go ahead. I think we're gonna go ahead and get started. It's uh, it's about almost ten minutes after. So I know we all got places to go and things to do, right? We gotta be uh, we gotta be. <laughs> now, brother, they just I, I say they just. I don't know when they did it, but you know they've got it. They've got it set up now where I can bring in one more person uh, that everybody can see. So and we could have a conversation. So they you know be talking like that. I'll just. Put, push that button and bring you in here but you know you'd have to you'd have to accept it so that that would be up to you but anyway all right let's go ahead let's start talking about prayer requests real quick if you have another one that you want to add if you will throw it in the comments i'll try to kind of keep watching that uh as well as is uh my uk shirt now brother brother phil now i had to take the uk shirt off i mean i had to get right with god if i'm gonna go to preaching now, I wore that for prayer. Now, uh, you know, and I'm going to wear, you, you know, if I really wanted to be right with God and wanted to be, you know, right up there close to him, I'd wear my Texas Longhorn shirt. Uh, and that, I mean, that would be right there in the throne room. But I didn't want to make everybody else feel bad. So, 
I'm sorry, that's just a comment on on Brother Phil jumping in there. Brother Wayne, good to see you, or good to, to see you on this, this morning. Glad to have you with us. All right, uh, Miss Glenda, way well, amen, good to see you. Well, there's, there's someone prayer's been working for. Good to see Miss Glenda. We'll keep praying for you. Amen. All right, prayer request. Let's do remember a couple. Miss Emma asked that we remember the family, uh, the Fowler family. They're, they're supposed to be having a funeral today for the young, uh, the, the little girl that passed away. Uh, that was two years old. So you pray for that family. Some some difficulties there. Um, so uh, just remember them in your prayers, trying to get all that together. Um, Brother Jim just asked we pray for uh, his mom, uh, Miss Louise. Uh, I want to remember this prayer request. Said she's sick. Um, uh, okay, she had the sickness that's going around. So pray for Miss Louise Crouch, you want to remember that. Uh, also, uh, Miss Emma asked that we pray for Miss Melissa. Uh, she's at home now. Uh, and hospice has been called in there, so you pray for them. I know they would appreciate that. Also, Miss Dana is is uh, having gallbladder surgery Thursday. Uh, they're going to be removing that, getting that out of the way. So you pray for her. I know she would appreciate that. Uh, as as we go, and like I said earlier, I've had that surgery. Miss Christie has, and it's it's not as uh, huge, uh, big a deal. You know, it's minor surgery, but you know the definition between major and minor surgery, right? Uh, minor surgery is when it's on you, and major surgery is when it's on me. So uh, anyway, just do remember them. All right, anybody else have a prayer request they want to throw in there? They want to they want to to add to our, to our list. Uh, I know we probably have several more, but the Chris continue to pray for him. Um, I know I'm not sure how many treatments he's having if he's having one a week or, or exactly how that's working um, I, I didn't get all that exactly right but you pray for him I know he would appreciate that uh, in his in his in his chemo uh, treatments that'll be having over the next six months um, pray for anybody that's on the roads I know it's it's not not real good uh, brother Larry will be having knee surgery on the sixth pray for him I know that'll be a, a, a blessing to him. Uh, Brother Jim will be having his soon as well. Uh, a lot of stuff going on. Let me give you a couple of things. That, that Those are just some of the prayer requests that, I, that I'm thinking about. Let me give you a couple of ideas of what's going on. Uh, okay, Brother Chris just said he has one every two weeks. So pray for him. So he'll have a week off and then he'll go back the next week for another treatment. Uh, let me give you a couple of the events, weather permitting. Now, I know we've got another storm that's supposed to be coming in possibly Wednesday so weather permitting uh, Tuesday night we'll start the first ladies Bible study uh, Miss Christy that's going to meet what, what time at 6 30 uh, so ladies if you're interested 6 30 Tuesday night we'll be meeting at the church for uh, the ladies Bible study what's the name of the book that y'all are going through top of your head you know uh, she's sitting across the table from me and I just I caught her off guard no, you don't have to get up. That's okay. Now I'm in trouble. Um, so they'll be starting that on Tuesday night. Let me just throw this. Let me go through the rest of the week, and I'll come back to this. Um, Wednesday night we'll have our regular services again, weather permitting. Uh, looking forward to getting back in Second John, um, and then we'll go in, go on from there. All right. She said the book is uh, that I may know him. Um, so uh, women's Bible study. So if you're interested, I'd encourage you to, to make sure that you're there. If you don't have a book, you come on uh, and you, you get involved with them. I'm sure they can help you get one. Uh, and if you ordered one, they'll have them for you. So, or, ma'am? Well, they're trying to get them in. Yeah, they're having some difficulty getting them in. They, they've got some of them ordered. they got some in, some are coming. So I just want to, to, to mention that. And then, uh, of course, Wednesday we'll have our regular services Kids for Truth and uh, back in the book, book of Second John. Thursday morning, there will be a ladies' Bible study. So you're going to do one Thursday, uh, Tuesday evening and then one Thursday morning. If you can be there in the mornings, that's fine. Or if you can be there in the evenings, that's fine. They're going to be basically the same study going two different days. Uh, just wanting to make it available for all of the ladies that can come. So if you want to uh, make plans on, on being there for that on either Tuesday night or Thursday morning. Saturday, we'll have visitation. 
Saturday morning if if weather permits. Uh, Thursday night also, we may we're, we're going to start trying to do more um, home visitations, not so much door to door soul winning, but we'll start trying to do some more follow up visits and things of that nature. So if you're available on a Thursday night, I know Brother Jim has been going with me on occasion on Thursday nights, and I really appreciate that. Uh, but if you're available uh, uh, and you'd like to go on a Thursday night and just uh, again like follow up with some visitors or maybe some folks that's not been able to come to church or or whatever that case may be on Thursday nights we'll do that. I think Thursday mornings the ladies that come some of the ladies that come to the Bible study on Thursday mornings I think some of them are going to try to start going and doing some of that type of visitation. So a uh, lot of stuff to get involved in there. Let me back up and and mention this about Tuesday night. And we'll then we'll we'll move on for for the service, brother Phil. You warming up over there? Uh, all right. <laughs> Tuesday nights, and and I think most of the church knows this, and I, I, I so hopefully it's not a surprise to you. But thir- Tuesday nights, I've been doing a discipleship program with some folks down in in Gulfport. We started the program before I moved to Kentucky, and we got permission from their pastor to continue that because we were already into it. Now, we weren't just but a few weeks in. That's why we're still we're finishing up. We've got four weeks left, I think, or four lessons left for that Tuesday night study. However, we've been doing it on online. We've been doing it kind of a, on Hangout, on Google Hangouts. It's a video conferencing setup. I can do 10 people at a time on that video conferencing what I'd like to do is, is find out if there'd be anybody that would be interested in doing some discipleship studies. And instead of trying to have another time you, that you have to come to the church and you've got to be there, we could do it either from, you know, and I could possibly even do it from here. I'd probably feel com- more comfortable at the church, but I could probably do it from home. Uh, but it would give you an opportunity to be involved in a discipleship program, kind of, you know, if you're new to the church or you're, you uh haven't been saved long or or you just like some extra um, intense I guess maybe not the right word but uh, Bible study we want to make that available so if you're interested and you'd like to kind of eavesdrop I hate to use that word but you'd like to listen in I've got permission from the couple brother Robin and brother Robin brother Scott and miss Robin Kennett uh, the couple that came and visited with us over uh, between Thanksgiving and Christmas got permission from them to do kind of what we're doing now, just a Facebook Live, while we're having our lesson. So you could listen in, or if you wanted to sign in through Hangouts, you could do that as well. I'd tell you how to do that. But if you're interested, if you'll let me know, then we'll uh, see about uh, getting everything hooked up for that, and, and you can, you can j- uh, view that and see if that might be something you'd be interested in. Uh, that'll give us some discipleship opportunities uh, without having to actually, you know, bring everybody to the church. We could do it however we wanted to. So we'll do it that way. All right. Any other prayer requests? I don't think I've seen any more. I saw Brother Chris. Um, He's just thanking everybody for uh, praying for him. And, boy, it's a joy to be able to do that. You know, isn't it amazing? amazing? Isn't it a great thing to be able to pray, go to the throne room of God, and see him answer prayer and see him uh, work in lives uh, of our church and our family, boy, it just encourages me and helps me to see. Man, if I just keep staying by the stuff, things things will go well. All right, I haven't seen anybody else uh, put in a, a prayer request. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to pray, uh, and, and then Brother Phil's going to lead us in a song. And then, <laughs> i got to get off of that. Uh, and, and then we'll have the offering. Everybody get their PayPal account ready. <laughs> I don't know how we're going to do that. Uh, we've got to go. It'd be nice if we come up with an online giving, right? Uh, so we're going to pray, and then we'll we'll go forward with the service this morning. All right? Let's go to the Father. Father, I am so thankful for another day you've given us. What a joy it is to be able to use technology for your honor and your glory. Pray that you'll help us today as we look into it to, to your word I uh, pray that you'll give us wisdom. Help us with the, the prayer requests that, that have been mentioned. Father, we could go through each one, and, and I know every one of them is very specific, very special. Uh, I do pray for uh, the Fowler family, 
uh, I can't even imagine what that family is going through, having, having never been through that situation myself. I pray that you'll put, put your hand on them, give them grace. Father, use this opportunity to point them to Christ, uh, that, that they would be face-to-face -face with the reality that Christ is uh, Lord, and that He is the giver of peace and, and comfort. Father, I pray that you'll be with uh, the Wilhelm family as well. I know Miss Melissa has kept a very uh, strong faith and attitude. Father, I pray that you'll help her uh, and just give her strength and grace. Be with the family. I know there are a lot of questions. Uh, I know there are a lot of concerns and, and just not really understanding why things like this happen. Father, I pray that you'll give them your mercy, that you'd wrap your loving arms around them, that you'd walk with them through this very, very trying time in their life. Be with Miss Dana. She faces the, the gallbladder surgery Thursday. And Brother Larry with the knee on, on the 6th. Uh, just uh, and, and things just continue. Brother Chris and his uh, treatments. So many things. Brother, Brother Crouch and his mom. Uh, and the list could just go on. Father, we love you. Pray that you'll meet with us. Uh, give us a good time in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So, uh, I don't see any other any other prayer requests. Hope y'all were praying while I was praying. Uh, that that's a good thing. There. All right. Go ahead and take your Bible then. I I can't get Brother Phil to sing. He wouldn't come on and say he'd do it. I couldn't get Brother Jerry to do it either. So I don't know what all that's about. But anyway, all these fair weather singers. All right. So we're gonna move on into uh, take your Bible. Looking in Matthew chapter number three. Matthew chapter number three. We're going to go ahead. I, I debated on what to do today. Uh, I kind of feel tied down. I'm sitting here in this chair. Uh, I, I thought about this a while ago. I'm going to have to get me a teaching stand or something. I'm set up in this in the house where I can preach and teach while I'm uh, housebound. If we have to do this for the weather anymore. Matthew chapter 3. We're going to look at, at a passage of scripture here. We talked about going from the birth to the cross between Christmas and Easter. So we're going to keep on that journey today. Matthew chapter 3. We're not going to cover everything, but we'll hit the points along the way. Matthew 3 verse 13. We're going to read about the baptism uh, of Christ. Matthew chapter 3 verse 13. If you're there, uh, read along with me. I almost said stand. That, that would really be fun, wouldn't it? Man, are we creatures of habit or what? All right. Matthew chapter 3 verse 13 and the Bible says this, Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me. And Jesus answer, answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, and lighting upon him, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Now last week we talked about Jesus being in the temple. And we took that one phrase from Jesus responding to uh, Mary and Joseph when he said, uh, Wish ye not that I must be about my Father's business, and we talked about the Father's business last Sunday morning. If you missed that message, you can go back and watch it on Facebook. This morning what we're going to do is take this statement of, uh, of God that we read in verse number 17, and we're going to talk about this subject this morning. We said in verse 17, in a low voice from heaven, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So the question or the thought this morning that we'll get to is this. Is the Father well pleased with us? Is the Father well pleased with us? So as we look at this, I'm reminded of a story or, or I guess we'll say a story that I read this week or I saw again this week on Facebook. You may have seen it. Uh, but it was a story about the, the pastor that was in uh, a service of his church, and he called on one of his older gentlemen to pray. Uh, and the older gentleman stood up to pray. Uh, and as he began to pray, he said, uh, God, boy, I sure really don't like buttermilk. Boy, that kind of bothered the pastor. He kind of, you know, 
stung there for a minute. You know, I thought, where is this gentleman going? And he went on and he said, Father, I don't like buttermilk and, you know, I really, I, I really don't like baking powder either. And I don't like raw eggs. By this time, the pastor's kind of got one eye open. He's looking at his, at, his, at his gentleman praying. Really not sure where he was going. Well, then the gentleman said, you know, but you start mixing these ingredients together and it makes a wonderful cake. And boy, I sure like the cake. So Lord, you help me enjoy the ingredients as you make a cake in my life. You know, sometimes we look at the ingredients that we see going into our life and we really don't understand what God's doing. But we need, to understand, we need to realize that God is putting together a recipe that He's designed for our life. He, he's putting together exactly what we need or, or what He wants to do. And our response to Him will elicit or bring forth that response about Him being pleased with us. Our obedience, our response to Him as Christ participated in this event of baptism. We find the Lord saying He was well pleased with the Son in His obedience unto the Father. Take your Bible, if you will, go on over to Matthew 25. Matthew 25, and we'll gain our text uh, that will connect, hopefully you'll see the connection, with Matthew 3 and Matthew 25. In Matthew 25, I'm not going to read the whole thing. Starting in verse 14, we find the, the, these words, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And, and this is this, the, the parable of the talents. And he, the, the, the uh, master gives the servants the talents. And I, I just want to skip down for sake of time uh, to verse number 21 for our text where the Lord returns and he says this, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. So with that thought in mind, we want to connect it to Jesus following the plan that God had prepared for him. We know he was born of a virgin. Uh, we know that he grew into adulthood. We know that now he's going into the, to, to the, the, the baptism and he's entering his earthly public ministry. Uh, he's going to the cross. He'll be uh, crucified. He'll be placed in the tomb. He'll, re uh, he'll rise again, all in the purpose and plan of the Father. And, and the Father said, as Jesus obeyed the will of the Father and submitted to that will, God said, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. This parable talks about the the master seeing what the servants have done and he says well done thou good and faithful servant so the question to start us and get us going is this will God speak these words to us is God pleased with our response to his recipe for our life alright so we want to notice three facts about this statement and hopefully it's our desire hopefully it's the desire of everyone that what we do is we desire to hear these words well done thou good and faithful servant uh, very simple message this morning number one we need to understand if God's going to say to us well done thou good and faithful servant number one we must do well right we must be good if we're going to hear those words now well, that raises a major, major issue, right? The Bible tells us there's a big problem with that. And we could go to the Scriptures and look at this. Uh, uh, in Romans chapter 3, verse 10 and verse 23, the Bible very clearly tells us that there's none righteous, no, not one. Uh, it tells us that we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. How are we going to hear these words of the Savior, uh, that if well done thou good and faithful servant, if on the first point we, we don't measure up? We are not good. Uh, the Bible is very, very clear on that. I'm going to roll over to uh, the book of Romans. Uh, if you want to turn with me, you're welcome to do that. 
uh, and just read some very, very familiar verses, uh, but things that we need to commit to memory uh, and we need to be able to share with others because this is that first point of coming to know Christ is understanding that there's none righteous. Romans chapter 3, verse 10, I said that a moment ago, as it's written, there's none righteous, no, not one. That's a very, very basic statement. Uh, verse 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Uh, that's just, the, again, the basic statement of, of where we are. Uh, Romans chapter 5, in verse number 12, the Bible says this, for, by, for wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. The problem is there are none of us that are good. Matter of fact, it is so bad. In Romans chapter 6 and verse 23, the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. What we deserve, instead of hearing well done, we deserve death and separation from God. That's exactly what we deserve. Isaiah chapter 64, the Bible talks about our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. So our problem is... We're not good. That's the statement. That's the truth. So understanding that truth, what do we do with that? Well, I'm glad you got a Bible. I'm glad I've got a Bible. I'm glad we've got the Holy Spirit of God leading us. So we can be led to this verse. Romans chapter 5 and verse number 8 says, But God commended His love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So we understand no one's good. And no one's going to hear those words, well done, except we come to Christ and give ourselves to Him and accept what Christ has done for us. Now, just a few minutes ago, we read uh, in Romans chapter 6, and verse 23, the first part of that verse. For the wages of sin is death. The last part of that verse is, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So the answer is we must be born again. So we've got to understand the solution to our problem here. If we're going to hear, well done thou good and faithful servant, we must be good. We must do it God's way. So what's God's way? God's way, Romans chapter 10, uh, if you will. Uh, turn over there. We'll give you the scriptures and we'll, we'll see this for the first point this morning. Romans chapter 10, verse 13, the Bible says this, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Boy, I'm glad I still have a God in heaven that's still saving people. I'm glad I still have a God in heaven that says if we'll do it God's way and come by the way of the cross, He will receive us and give us what we need, and that's forgiveness through his blood. I want to run over here and read you a verse of scripture in, in the book of John, chapter number 10. John, chapter number 10. Uh, we'll read verse uh, 27, verse 28 real quick. Listen to this. He said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Well, there a good verse right there for the security of the believer that we trust Christ and we receive Him as our Lord and Savior. Uh, then we have eternal life. That's life that will never end. Uh, and then He says again, just to restate that, He says that neither uh, that they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Amen. I, I am glad I have a God that's able to save me and to keep me uh, and to secure me uh, and to work in my life. Amen. All right. Well, Brother Jim, he's he been in the amen section right there. All right. So I, I, I appreciate that. Now, let's move on. So, well, let's ask this question, then we'll move on to point number two. So the question is this, have you dealt with the sin problem? Have you dealt with the sin problem? Now, I understand we're we're... Uh, I'm preaching to the choir this morning. I, I get that. But you know, we all have to answer that question and make sure that we know that we know that we have Jesus Christ as our Savior. You know, it'd be terrible to go to go to hell from a, a bar stool. Be it'd be terrible to go to hell from, uh, from, from, from a nightclub. Uh, it'd be terrible to go to hell from anywhere. But it would really be terrible to go to hell from a church pew or a church chair. Going through religion is not going to be enough. 
It's going to have to be a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. So number one, will God say, well done. You have to be good, and that only comes through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Number two, let me give you the second thought uh, in the, the message. I don't know what you were expecting this morning. I'm preaching, so just hang on. All right. Uh, number two, we must be faithful. He said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. So we must be faithful. The requirement in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 2, it said that it's, it's required among stewards that a man be found faithful. There's a requirement there that as you and I have, have accepted Christ as our Savior, that now we are accountable unto God to be faithful unto Him. That's what this Facebook Live message this morning is all about. There are circumstances that come up. There are things that happen. There are snow on the ground, ice. We can't get to church. But we can still be faithful to the things of God uh, as God has given us opportunity. So the requirement here is that we be faithful to the things of God. Now, I'm going to jump in right here and say this. Uh, you can't be faithful to the things that you don't know are in the Bible. Now, I didn't say God wasn't going to hold you accountable to what you didn't know. I said you can't be faithful to what you don't know is in there. That's why you need to get in the Bible. You need to get in the book. You need to read the Word of God. You need, you, I'm challenging you to read through the Bible this year. Uh, boy, I saw. I, I'm gonna say this, and I, you, you may not like it. That's okay. I, I saw on Facebook this this month that uh, Dr. Tom Wallace. I'm convicted. Dr. Tom Wallace said that he had January off. He made sure that he had some downtime, and, and in that time. He, he made the pledge to read through the Bible again. Read through the entire Bible in a month. Pause for effect right there. See, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to get us to read through the Bible in a year. He read it in a month. I, I'm not saying that to lift him up. I'm saying this. It can be done. We can get through the Bible. I, I've got a certificate sitting on my desk right now uh, that I need to turn that, that I need to hand out for someone that read their Bible through in the year uh, and and sent the form back into Beams and they sent them a certificate uh, for reading the Bible. We need to get in the Word of God and read. If we're going to be, how are we going to be faithful to what God's told us to do if we're not sure what's in there? Boy, there's a lot of stuff in this Bible from cover to cover. If we'll get in and read it and study it, all right. So it's required a, a, of a uh, Stuart, that a man be found faithful. Take your Bible. Uh, turn to Matthew chapter number 6. Matthew chapter number 6. Now, I didn't mark any of this either. Uh, so I'm turning just like you. Uh, so just go to Matthew chapter number 6. Uh, and we'll look at verse uh, number 24. Matthew 6, verse number 24. The Bible says this, No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. So it's required among stewards that a man be found faithful. Faithful to what? What's the object of our faith? What must be that, that thing that we focus on? Well, the Bible tells us in Matthew 6, 24, uh, that, that you got a choice. Uh, you're either going to serve God or you're not going to serve God. You're going to serve God or you're going to choose the other choice. What's the other choice? The other choice is the devil, the world, uh, anti-God. That's, that's what that is. So you're either going to choose to be faithful to God or you're not. James chapter number 3. Turn over there. James chapter number 3. We'll give you another verse on this one. James chapter number 3. And we'll look at a verse dealing with this idea of the object of... Well, I can't find the book of James. All right, it's in here somewhere, I know. I think Miss Katie, take my pages together in my Bible. James chapter number 3, verse number 11. Notice this, notice this statement. Doth the fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either of vine figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. So the object of our faith, you're going to have to choose where your object, where your faith is going to be placed. You know, you've heard me say this before. Uh, I'll say it again. It takes as much or more faith to believe evolution as it does to believe the Bible account of creation. It's all by faith. It's just 
where you choose to place your faith. Uh, so we have the requirement that all be found faithful. Uh, we have the object of our faith. We must choose to place that faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And then take your Bible to Philippians chapter number 1. Philippians chapter number 1, and we'll talk about the result of that faith. Philippians chapter number 1, verse number 27, the Bible says this, Only let, only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Uh, so the result of that faith is going to be a reaching of people with the gospel of Christ. So, so we've got to get to the place where we understand, if we're going to hear those words, well done, thou good and faithful servant, we must be faithful unto him. Reminds me of a little story I thought about while I was putting this message together this week. When I was a little boy, I mean little feller, I was probably, I don't know, five, four, five, six years old, I guess. Uh, I'll put, wasn't that, I had to be younger than that because we were living with my grandmother and grandfather, so I was probably three or four. I had a little dog uh, named Charlie Brown. He was a little mix he had a little chihuahua in him and, and charlie brown had a problem charlie brown only had one eye and and but he was my buddy and and grandma in an attempt to keep me from running off in the woods we lived out in the country grandma told me that there was a boogeyman out in the woods and i needed to stay out of the woods so so uh, you know i was just trying to you know as a boy trying to keep me out of the woods keep me on a straight and narrow well, it didn't work quite so well. One day they got to looking for me and I was gone. They couldn't find me anywhere. They searched and searched and searched and called and cried and, and hollered and everything else. And finally, they'd been looking for a while, Grandma said. And finally, here I come strolling out of the woods with my little dog, Charlie Brown, and my pop pistol. And I had a little pop gun. And I had, me, me, had Charlie Brown. And Grandma run over and grabbed me and asked me what in the world I was doing. And I told her I'd been hunting the boogeyman. I was going to take care of him and get him out of the way. Uh, well, she whooped me that day. <laughs> anyway, that was not a good day for me. Uh, but the, the, where I want to bring this into faithful was that little dog, Charlie Brown, he walked, all, he walked all through them woods with me. He never left my side. He stayed right there beside me. Where I went, he went. What I did, he did. Uh, he was very faithful to me. Kind of gives me a picture of how I ought to be with God. I ought to be faithful to him. I ought to go where he goes. I ought to go where he leads me. I ought to do what he says I ought to do. I ought to just be faithful to him and follow him and do exactly what God has for me. So I'll ask you this question, and we'll get to the third point of the message this morning. How faithful have you been to Christ? How faithful have you been to the Word of God? How faithful have you been to the commands of Christ in your life? We stand before God. Every one of us want to hear these words, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Have we been faithful to do what God calls us to do? Now, I, I could stop right here and I could give you the list of what I think people ought to do to be faithful to God. I, I could go through the list and tell you what I, but I'm not going to do that. Here's what I'm going to do. It's, I'm going to be even worse than that. Instead of just giving you the list, I'm going to say this. Why don't you get along with God? Get your Bible out. Get on your face before Him. Ask the Holy Spirit of God to lead you into exactly what God wants you to do in your life. And then get in this book and start reading. And as God shows you things in your life that you need to do, you, you, you buckle up and you do them uh, because it's what God wants for you to do. I guarantee you, you will never out-respond to what God wants you to do in your life. You, you, cannot, you cannot do too much uh, to put God in a bind. God will always be right there to, to respond to obedience in your life and be pleased with your willingness to be faithful unto Him. All right, let's go on. We'll get the last uh, point, uh, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, you'll have the message this morning. So uh, hopefully you've kind of figured out where this was going. Uh, we had number one, uh, you must be good. You must be born again. You must have the blood of Christ applied to your life. There must be a time where you remember that you 
in brokenness went to God, realizing you were a sinner, realizing Christ died for you, realizing you needed to ask Him to forgive you and make Him Lord of your life. That's how we get to be good. Uh, to be faithful, then we have to understand that what we've got to do uh, is we've got to allow God to lead us. We've got to respond to the faithfulness of God. We've got to respond in faithfulness of our, our, ourself and do what God wants us to do. And then number three, we must be a servant. We've got to be. Well, I thought that was the deacon's job. Well, that is what that word means. Deacon, that does mean to be a servant. And that is an official capacity in the church. But all of us are called to be servants unto God. All of us are called to be servants unto God. Now let's take our Bible. Let's go back to the book of Romans. Let's look at a couple of verses uh, to get our thought for this idea of being a servant unto God. Sometimes we think, you know, that we can do things our way. I think there's a song about that. Did it my way? Well, God never said He wanted us to do it our way. He wanted us, did, wanted us to do it His way. He called us to be a servant unto Him. Romans chapter 6, verse number 17. The Bible says this, But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you. We used to be the servants of sin. You know, you've heard me say this before. Why do, why do sinners do what they do? Why do lost people act the way they act? They act that way because they're sinners. And it's natural for them to act that way. It's natural for them to live after the flesh because they are sinners and that's what they do. But you and I that have been born again, you and I that have been called by the Spirit of God, you and I that have said we want to be faithful to God, now we have a responsibility to be that servant that God has called us to be. Verse 18 of Romans chapter 6 says, Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of of righteousness. Did you catch the statement there? Wasn't a question. Wasn't a possibility. Wasn't a maybe so, hope so. The statement here said, Being then made free from sin. See, if we're born again, we've been made free from sin. If we're born again, God's placed that Spirit of God within us. And we became the servants of righteousness. Take your Bible, turn to the book of Ephesians, chapter number 2. Ephesians, see, there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of wiggle room in that statement. I don't know where we as modern, and I'm going to use that word on purpose, I don't know where we as modern Christians have gotten the idea that I can pick and choose to do what I want to do without repercussions. I think the problem is we've made the choice to do what we want to do and we don't see a response from God right away. Therefore, we think that we've either gotten away with it or God doesn't care. But we need to understand that the old saying goes like this. The old time preachers used to say it this way. God doesn't pay at the end of every day. But the end of the way, God always pays. And you can take that on either side of the fence. All right. So in Ephesians chapter number 2, look at what it says in verse number 8. Very, very familiar passage of scripture. He, he says this, For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So he tells us here that we are created unto good works. That means you need to be faithful. That means you need to be a servant. 
Uh, that means we need to get involved in what God's doing uh, and, and what God's calling us to and, and the church that God's placed us in and the people that God has, has put in our sphere of influence that we can reach them with the gospel. We are the servants of God. What would happen? What would happen? Let's see, uh, Brother John, he's uh, in, in uh, the National Guard. That's, uh, or, or if you were in the military and your superior gave you an order and said you need to do whatever it might be. Let's make it an easy one. You need to dig this ditch from point A to point B. And I want it this deep and this wide. Uh, I want it straight. I want it done. That officer comes out. In an hour, and the shovel's still laying on the, on, on, in the dirt, and, and you're sitting there uh, doing whatever you're doing instead of what he told you to do, what's going to happen? Yeah, it's not going to be good. There's going to be some repercussions. Why? Because you were given an order, uh, and you are basically a servant unto that superior, and you were expected to do what they told you to do. Well, that's a not a great analogy or a great example about us and the Lord, but we are His servants, and we are expected to do what He's told us and called us to do from His Word. Why does He have the authority? Well, that's, boy, that's a whole, that's a loaded question, isn't it? Because He's God. He has that authority because, number one, He's creator and ruler over all of this. But notice what it says. Go back to 1 Corinthians let me give you another verse over here and, and show you what it says there. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians chapter number 6. And we'll read verse 19. He said, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Child of God, understand, God paid a great price for you. He gave His only begotten Son who left the throne of God, limited Himself, was made a little lower than the angels, the Bible says, robed Himself in flesh, submitted Himself to the growth process, went to Calvary's cross and died for us. We are bought with a great price. So if we are purchased, if we are bought, if God paid for us, then according to verse number 20, therefore, and every time you see that word, you back up and look and see what it's there for. Because He has bought us, therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Glorify the Father. Give Him the honor and the glory. Live in a way that is pleasing unto Him. Live in a way that God desires for us to live. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. One more verse of Scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. We'll look at verse number 14. It says, For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. The love of God constraineth us. We are called and constrained by the love of God to reach the lost with the gospel. Let me ask you a question. Who was instrumental in bringing you to Christ? Who was instrumental in bringing the gospel to you? For me to answer that question, it's, it's probably not going to be one individual. I'd have to start off with my stepdad. He's the one that brought us to church before mom and dad married. I, I didn't go to church. Well, I went to the Catholic church a few times. I mentioned that the other day. I went to the Catholic Church. I didn't enjoy it. I got pinched every time I went, it felt like, because I couldn't be still. And my aunt always got on to me. I didn't like church. When, I, when Mom and Dad got married when I was six, Daddy started taking us to church. 
So I'd have to say, number one, he was influential in bringing me to Christ. You've heard me talk about Miss Schott, my little Sunday school teacher. She was instrumental in bringing me to Christ because she taught me the truth. Brother Dunn, who was the, my, my pastor then, he preached truth and brought me to Christ. So there are several folks that were influential in bringing me to Christ. What about you? What would have happened if my daddy would have not taken us to church? What would have happened if that Sunday school teacher wouldn't have taught me truth? What would have happened if Brother Dunn wouldn't have been preaching truth from the pulpit? What would have happened if that person that knocked on your door that day didn't come by? Where would you be right now? Oh, I would have had another opportunity. I would have had another chance. Really? Would you? Can we honestly say that? We don't know. We have a grave responsibility. We are called and constrained by the love of Christ to do what God has called us to do. And number one, that's to get involved with what He's involved in. And the heart of God, He came to seek and to save that which was lost. How are we doing that? We're getting in the Word of God. We're taking it to the streets. We're taking it to people. We're letting them see the gospel in us. In the Bible, there's, there's a, a, an interesting picture. And it's a picture of an old Hebrew servant. In the Hebrew household, they had servants. And this servant, what he would do, he would serve for a certain period of time. You go by, I don't have time to do all that, but you go back and study the history of Israel. Uh, you find an old Hebrew servant, they could only serve for so many years. Uh, and then that master was required to uh, turn him loose. However, if that Hebrew servant made the decision that they wanted to stay with that master, they could become a willing bond slave to that master. And what they would do is, I know, ladies, they would take uh, 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 an awl, they'd take a nail, if you will, and they would drive it through the lobe of the ear and nail that person to the door. They would drive it, they'd put a hole in their ear. And that would signify that they were a bond slave, a willing servant who could have gone free, but they willingly stayed with the master. That's a neat parallel when Christ uses that word to describe us. A willing servant. A servant who willingly gives himself to the master. That we might be able to serve him and work and do what God's called us to do. So the question on point number three would be this. Have you submitted yourself to Christ? Have you submitted yourself to Christ? Some of you may have never submitted yourself to discipleship. Just learning about the Savior. Learning about church. Learning about how we do things, why we do them. Learning the basics of Christianity, if you will, or more pointedly, a relationship with Christ. That's why I mentioned the Tuesday night thing. Some of us have not committed ourselves to reading our Bible. Some of us have not committed ourselves to praying. Some have not committed ourselves to giving. Some have not committed ourselves to witnessing. There are so many areas where we need to commit ourselves as servant, servants of God, committing ourselves to Him. So in summary, what have we talked about this morning? We've talked about hearing the, that phrase from the Master, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. So here's my question. Number one, are you good? Can't be good on your own. Are you good? Have you come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ? Number two, faithfulness is according to God's terms not ours. Faithfulness is according to God's terms. Have we been faithful? Have we truly, honestly been faithful? What about next Sunday morning? Will I see you as faithful in your place? What about in Sunday school? What about Wednesday night? Ladies Bible study. 
visitation. Will I find you faithful? Will you find me faithful? Oh, more importantly, will God find us faithful? And then finally, servanthood. Being a servant is unconditional. We don't get to make, we don't get to draw the lines. We don't get to make the rules. What we have to do is say, God, here am I. Use me. God, here am I. Use me. Father, I thank you for just the opportunity to be able to come together this morning. I pray that there's one of the sound of my voice that doesn't know Christ as their Savior, even in this context. I pray that they would get on their face before you today. They would humble themselves, realizing they are a sinner before a holy God. And that they trust you and ask you to forgive them and follow Christ as their Savior. Father, I pray for our faithfulness, that you'll help us to be even more faithful this year. And Father, I pray for our acts as a servant, that we will just be humble and willing and active in our service to you. We love you. And I thank you for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. In Jesus' name. Boy, I thank you for your time this morning. I appreciate you tuning in. And I pray that the Word has been helpful to you this morning uh, as we try to seek to do what God wants us to do. So let's think about this over the course of the day. Are we faithful unto God? Have we given ourselves unto Him? Now I'm going to go out here in a little bit and see if I can't make my way to the church Find out what it looks like and see what's going on. Look, I don't expect anybody to get out on all this stuff, uh, so we'll 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 keep you to get in, uh, uh, keep you informed over the next few hours about what's taking place. So uh, let's keep looking up, and let's keep the Lord focused uh, in our focus. Uh, keep things going and and, and looking to, unto Him. All right, I see so several that are saying thanks. Hey, look, I, I appreciate you uh, being with us. I appreciate you tuning in, uh, and I appreciate you being faithful. God bless you. Have a great and wonderful day.